Hello, wider world and our Hillsboro readers and listeners. We're back. I'm Laura Mikowski. I've got the latest presentation of Book Bites Middle School Morsels ready for you. Let's kick this new long distance school year off with some comfort food in the form of new amazing books. These titles will give you pause, awareness, hope and strength to lean on and escape with during your new school year and ongoing isolation. I'll give you a moment to grab a bowl of mac and cheese, a samosa, or a slice of pie, and while you nibble, let's see what's out there waiting for you to dig into. What's your favorite go-to dinner? Have you had the opportunity to make or bake something this summer? Are you someone who's dying to get your pumpkin pie fixed this fall already? Despite the obvious differences in our world, there's one thing most of us can agree on and often bring us together in the best of ways. Food! We're lucky enough to be in Hillsboro and exposed to a wealth of amazing cuisines, which got me thinking about the amazing selection of books that are new and can be put under a category called Booties for Thought. So we've got All-American Paneer Pie by Sapria Kelker, Stepping Stones by Lucy Nicely, and Summer of 1,000 Pies by Margaret Dillaway. All these are new to the library and waiting for you to get to. Let's dig into All-American Paneer Pie by Sapria Keckler. I knew this would be a good book just because of the title. Right away, we're brought into Leika's home, her parents speaking Hindi, the oil frying up a batch of fresh paneer, and Leika moving seamlessly through it all, getting ready to head out to swim practice. That is, until she has to go to school. School Leika is different. She's careful, guarded, being the only Hindu kid in class, living in an overwhelmingly white Detroit suburb. But no matter the angle she takes to assimilate, pinning her hair over her bindi birthmark, or simply packing a nondescript peanut butter and jelly every day, she's bullied mercilessly for her skin, her hair, her food, her family, even her name. With only Noah by her side, she finds her two worlds are getting more difficult to separate and manage as she's growing up as a first-generation American. Is she too Indian? Too American? Is there such a thing? Enter Avantika. She's Leka's new neighbor from India. She's also Hindu and now presumably Leka's new classmate and assumed BFF. Instead of an ally, Leika finds herself embarrassed by Avantinka's clothes, her accent, her fortrightness. She's just too much. Is there such a thing when it comes to standing up for yourself, though? And when faced with outright xenophobia that affects her and her family directly, what's Leika to do? Leika stands to learn from both inside and outside her home as she navigates two worlds multiple friendships, and new experiences which ultimately push her in a direction that feels right. With many relatable stumbles, she just might find the grace, power, and love, and the many forms it takes, family, friends, and food, to find her voice and step into all that she truly is. Next up is Stepping Stones, written by Lucy Nicely. Have you been to our farmer's market and bought a bouquet of flowers, or a honey stick? Who are these people who set up in the early a.m. to bring us fresh food and treats? Maybe you happen to buy something from Jen's family, Peapod Farm? In Stepping Stone, Jen is new to the farming world, adjusting to it as a result of her parents' divorce and her mother's love of the countryside. Can a city girl become a country girl? Can she find her place when two stepsisters arrive to help out? What exactly is her role in this unwanted, newfound family? And why in the world is she responsible for the keeping and care of their new chickens? If you enjoy fresh food served with attitude, you'll enjoy the up and down family life that goes with it as Lucy nicely explores the dynamics of a changing family, lifestyles, and self in this satisfying coming of age graphic novel, Stepping Stones. Okay, and last up is Summer of 1,000 Pies by Margaret Dillaway. Oh, you know why this one's in the mix. Two of my favorite words, summer and pies. Caddy's off to a new life. 
How is it she's now sleeping in the bedroom of the mother she never knew, living with an aunt she never knew she had? And why is it starting to feel like it's a place she can belong after living on the streets with her dad in San Diego for so long? Does she dare put roots down? Caddy's traumatic life has taken a turn for the better as she joins a loving aunt who lives in a tourist town. Best of all, her aunt owns a pie shop. Clearly, she knows her customer base, and little by little, Caddy finds herself immersed in it and determined to learn the secrets of pie making. But when things start to go awry, will Caddy be able to finish her goal of a thousand pies by the end of summer? And why and who should she trust, knowing her father may get out of jail and whisk her away at any time? There are very high stakes at play while Caddy finds pieces of herself that are still intact and new pieces to unpack and unroll. See how she does it and learn why making pies can be both an amazing achievement and the best of stress relievers. Pie recipe included. Wait for it. Okay, we've got first choice, first chapter. And the winner today is American as Paneer Pie. Let's take a listen, see if you like it. Looking at the wide face of the frumpy, half-collapsed hat. A whale? Uncool, Leka, said Noah, pretending to be offended. It's a shark, and a dolphin. A shark fin, actually. It's a dolphin for tomorrow morning, to wish you luck at tryouts. Thanks, I said nervous butterflies fluttering. I tried to remain calm about the swim team tryouts where I might finally become a full-fledged member of the Dolphins. Except I'm not going to wear it there because, you know, it looks like this and I don't want to embarrass you on your big day. But tomorrow night, on Halloween, I will be wearing it because on Halloween, it's going to be the shark to your Michael Phelps. With elements of food... Friendship, cultural identity, and family, the following titles can be read to expand your experiences with our three featured titles in completely different ways. So much good here to gobble up. I do hope you'll check these out and share with your own friends. All come with heavy servings of food. And with that, please look for the Biblio Commons book list by the same name on our online catalog to directly access these selections in their many formats. During the months of September and October, Hillsborough Public Library will be posting additional book reviews on Mondays, including and introducing two new areas to explore, book bits, picture books, and young adult titles. Don't fear, Karen Hayes will continue to highlight winners from our first chapter, Collection 2. So thank you for joining me, and please do keep on reading.